There we go. Go ahead. You ready, sir? Sure. All right. Uh, this is Special Agent Ryan Kelly, Special Agent Chandler Horney with the State Law Enforcement Division. It's Thursday, June 10th at 2.01 p.m. Um, we are here with Mr. John Marvin Murdoch. Uh, Mr. Murdoch, can you please state your full name? John Marvin Murdoch. Uh, can you please state your date of birth? And your cell phone number. Okay. Um, obviously, we're, we are uh, continuing the investigation into the incident uh, and the events of June 7th, 2021. Um, can we start off by just getting some general information about you? Um, how are you, um, obviously, uh, you are a murderer, so how are you related to Richard Alex? He's my brother. Okay. Um, Had you uh, been at the property that day? At his property? At Moselle? No. Okay. When was the last time you have been at Moselle? It has been several months. Several months? Okay. Okay. Um, and for the purpose of us, uh, it's been several months, but you've been to the property, correct? Oh, yes. Okay. So, so one of the reasons that we are reaching out to not just the – we're trying to identify as many persons that have been in contact with – with the family and with the property, uh, so we can start widening, you know, excluding our search or, or uh, excluding individuals, and so we can kind of start focusing on on other things. Um, wh where were you at? Wh what are your general whereabouts on on June seventh? What were you doing? June seventh being Monday. Yes. Yes, I was at my home. Okay. Okay. And had you had any contact with with? What, who do you refer to Richard as, Richard or Alec? Alec. Okay. It's actually, we call him Alec. Okay, Alec. We don't even, we can't even pronounce his name, so we call him Alec. Hey, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, when was the last, uh, uh, did you have any contact with Alec on, on Monday? Monday evening. Okay. And and tell me about that, that interaction. Well, I got a phone call from him. My wife and I were watching television. Um, he called me. I think he was going to check on our mom. Uh, whether y'all know or not who has Alzheimer's dementia. Um, my dad, I had checked him into the hospital that day and he was checking on her because she's very anxious. And, you know, he was just, you know, calling me to kind of, you know, give me an update. Like he, we all kind of communicated about that. And we didn't talk long. He, um, you know, just told me what he was doing. What time did that call come in? We were watching television. So I would assume it was probably... Eight, nine. Do you have it on your phone? Like, did he call you on that phone? Yeah, he called me on this phone. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, if if, if he called you on that phone, we can yeah. figure out when. Yeah, he you, I mean, you're welcome to, to look at it and see. Um, well, if you just um, um, you tell me how to do that, and or you do it, and you well, feel free. Just go to. So you go to. Reasons. Okay, so you've had. It's no, been, I've had tons of phone yeah, calls. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. So it's not, it's not going to show on there. So, uh, but, but we, so it, it was, you know, it, I, I'm assuming it was dark outside. It was probably eight, nine o'clock. Okay. And how long did y'all talk for? A couple of minutes at most. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say now, I, I told him we were watching a movie and it, <laughs> What yeah. movie did y'all watch? It's a show. I think it's called Billionaire. Okay. All right. And then, um, and for the purpose of the state of this interview, uh, what is your wife's name? Uh, Elizabeth. Goes by Liz. And, and, he, and you asked about him. Uh, I was talking. He then, of course, called me later mm -hmm. once all this. Okay. What happening. time did he call you later? You know, we were still watching television, so it would have been closer to 10, I would guess. Okay. And what did he tell you? Well, that's when he was calling, to, you know, uh, it had just described. He said, he says, John and Paul and Maggie have been, have been shot and been hurt. And it was just total panic. And he said, please get here as fast as you can. Okay. It, I just got dressed as quick as I could. Okay. okay. And what did you do then? Uh, just threw my clothes on and, and drove to Moselle. 
Um, um, yeah, so so I just I, I drove as fast as I could. I mean, I got there as quick as I could. Okay. Um, and what what car did you drive to get over there? I drove one of Alex trucks. Okay. And so what what truck did you drive? Yeah, it was a. Uh, I believe it's an F-250. Okay. A diesel truck. Okay, so you left your house uh, and, and got over to Alex. Well, a little bit more transpired in between. I, I started driving, I, and I was, I mean, obviously I was speeding. Um, a good friend of mine's the chief in Yemassee, and I told him, that's the way I was traveling. The guy said, I said, chief, I said, there's been something bad's happened. I said, please, you know, meet me on the road and, and help get me there. You know, and of course he did. He put his blue lights on and and helped me. You know, okay. You know, we were probably driving 70, 80 miles an hour. I, I don't know how fast, okay. that, but I was, I, I was, yeah, was I was driving fast. And, All right. So you got to Alex's? No, no. Okay. We got um, we got to three. Oh, sorry, sixty three, where you would turn to go, and about halfway down sixty three, the truck broke down on me. Okay. Or or ran out of fuel. I noticed that it didn't have much in it, so, but it quit running. And I, and I called Greg and I said, Greg, listen, man, come back and get me. All right. And and by Greg, you mean Alexander, a chief of police. Yeah. Like I said, he was just in front of me. Okay. Escorting me, if you will, if you want to call it that. So um, Chief Alexander came back. He came back, picked me up. I left the truck and we went straight to Moselle. Okay. And what? And and y'all went straight to Moselle. So what did Chief Alexander do then? Did he, did he stick around with you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He okay. stayed, well, he stayed not just with me, but, you know, he's a close family friend, and he stayed as just as support, not in a official capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so when you got there, um, let's see, you... How, how, how do you how often do you interact with Paul? Quite often. Okay. And Paul Paul was working for me this summer. Okay. And in and in what capacity was Paul working for you? Just summer work. Okay. And which which company is he working for? Murdoch Reynolds in Okatee. Hmm. All right. And how long have you been working for you? He started the Tuesday after Memorial Day, so whatever remember that day is the second maybe. How many employees you got? We we keep somewhere between ten and twenty employees. Just okay. Does, is he friend? Any? Do you hire any of his? Any of Paul's friends? No, he's the only summer help I've I, I hired. Okay, okay. You and you have regular employees. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um. He's worked for me two, maybe three summers now. Okay. Was was he? How how was he doing? I mean. Now, look, I know that in no way are we trying to speak ill of, of, of anybody that's been involved in this, but obviously something has happened of a violent nature that we have to kind of get a better understanding of who these people are. Right. And there's no there's no good way to ask. No, you, you know, feel you ask ask anything you need. Uh, I mean, I'm. So how was how how was Paul? Was was he dependable? Was he? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In that regard, yes, absolutely. Okay. Did you ever have any? Did you ever witness any any behavior that was? You talking about bad behavior? Yeah. No, no, not okay. at all. Not okay. at all. In fact, he's he he was an asset. He was a joy. I mean, customers loved talking to him. Okay. He, he was probably a lot friendlier than anybody else because we're there. We're there. We're doing it every day, and yes. he's there for the summer. Okay. Okay. But uh, no, not at all. Was he close with any of the any of the other employees? No, but very friendly. I mean, there you know everybody loved him. So. Yeah. Were there any other employees that are kind of his age? Uh, yes, I have one employee that's that's probably two years, maybe three years older than him. And who's that? His name is Chance Peters. Okay. Chance Peters. Um, how long has Chance Peters worked with you? He's been with me for a few years now. Okay. Okay. Does he live local or does he live? Well, he's actually, he's, he was living in the...
I yeah. think he's got a new house under contract over. Okay. Um, and if we had to, because, you know, we're trying to reach out to folks that, that may have been Paul's age and may have had, yeah. you know, uh, some knowledge or some interaction with them. Um, if, if we needed to get a contact number for Chance, you could get that to us? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and how did Chance come to work with you? Um, how did he come about as? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my employees that I had um, several years ago, I, I assume they knew each other socially and, and indicated he was looking for a job. Okay, okay, all right. And he's worked here for how many years? Two, maybe going on three, uh, all right. a couple of years. So nothing of, of any concern I mean, with, with Paul. Now, let me ask you, were there any issues with with Maggie? I mean, uh, how was, do you know of any of her friends that she might have associated with or hung out with? Or? Well, she's very close with my wife. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, they, they communicate regularly. Um, You know, I would, in fact, I may even say that they they may have been or have over over the time have become best of friends. Okay, okay. And I mean, any concerns? I mean, since this has happened, has, has your wife spoken of anything that may have been a concern? Or you know, no. It, I guess the the straightforward answer on that is no. But as you well know, all the media that's that's mm -hmm. been going on and going back and forth. You know, uh, my wife seems to think everything's an issue, and I kind of downplay everything. Okay, was there anything that she might have uh, that she might have said about? I mean, anything specific? She no, was an issue? no. You know, you know. I think I think Maggie. You, you're talking about Maggie and yes. telling Liz. Yeah. Yes. It, well, Liz. You know, I think you know. I think she was just just sick of all the gossip and mm -hmm. and things that were going on, and you know, she just. You know, be talking about her, your son, and things that they don't know about. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. I understand, and and it's very tough for us to, like I said, we understand that y'all are family and, and, and y'all are grieving, and in the middle of this, we have to come in and kind of insert ourselves to be like, well, you know, and then start kind of poking around. I know that can. I mean, it's you know, whatever, well, whatever we can do to help is what we're doing. Okay. Um, any um. Like I said, so Paul was a was a good employee. Uh, none of his behavior seemed out of sort. Not at all. Okay. Um, what about with, with Maggie? Any any weird any indifferent behavior recently that I didn't have enough contact with her. Okay. You know we, I would see Maggie on special occasions. You know mm -hmm. things like that. I didn't communicate with her like like my wife does. Okay. And and nothing that that has your wife ever has your wife ever said anything that hey something seems off or. No. Okay. Um, do you know if your wife had any communication with Maggie on the seventh? I don't know if she did, but uh, I could. I could almost. I'd be willing to bet she did. Cause I think they communicated every day. Okay, but I mean, wife, by text or telephone. Your wife hasn't said anything to her specifically. Uh, didn't say anything to me. Okay. Okay. Um, when was the last time you uh, communicated with Paul? Um, on Monday. Okay. Monday afternoon. Okay. And did Paul work that day? He did. Okay. What time did you get off work? Well, we closed at five. I wasn't there. Um, okay. But so we closed at five. What time did Paul go into work? Well, we opened it, opened the doors at eight, and he normally would show up well before eight, seven thirty, seven, four, probably seven forty-five. Okay. And I'm assuming that he was there. I wasn't there. Sure. What, wait a minute. I was there. I was there Monday morning. I wasn't there Monday afternoon. Yeah, he's always on time. Yeah. I mean, I'm, okay. And he so he worked Monday. Yes. Okay. And then you saw him there Monday morning, and then you you left. So you were up. Yeah. So so Monday morning, and it, it gets a little bit. So my brother Randy calls me. My dad has a doctor's appointment in Savannah, and. A long story, he's been battling all kinds of issues, cancers, and, and just got out of the hospital on Sunday. Um, 
but he has an appointment, a follow-up appointment Monday, and it turns out it's earlier than we anticipated, and, and I was scheduled to drive him that afternoon. Randy calls me and says, meet me in Ridgeland. I'm going to have Daddy. Okay. We'll go swap cars, and you take him on to Savannah. Okay. And so we did that. We met at Palmetto Co-op in Ridgeland, and, um, and I drove him to Savannah. Doctor's appointment. Well, the doctor checks him out and says, man, we got to get you in the hospital. So we spent all afternoon getting him checked into the hospital. Um, as the evening, later in the evening, I, I, I probably left Savannah five, probably five-ish. Okay. In my mom's car, because my brother had given me mm -hmm. my mom's car with my dad. My brother took my truck back to my parents' house right here in Alameda. Um, so I leave there. I call Paul, and I said, man, you know, you going back to Hampton tonight? He said, yes. I said, if you can wait, take my mom's car to Alameda, drop it off, get my truck, bring my truck in in the morning. And, um, and then, you know, I'll drive your truck to work and we'll, you know, be back in our own vehicles. Okay. And did that happen? Yes. Well, well, so what? Yeah, all, all that transpired until not swapping cars back the following morning. Of okay. Course. So, so he took my mom's car, dropped it at Alameda. Yeah. Alameda is where my parents live. Okay. Yep. Um, got my truck, drove it to, uh, so presumably I'm, drove yeah. it to Moselle. Okay. And. So your truck was at Moselle? My truck was at Moselle, and his truck is at my house. When I got the call that night from Malik, of course, the only car that I don't have my truck, so yep. I get in Paul's truck yep. and start driving it back to okay. to meet Alec. Okay, and, and your truck was what? What was your vehicle? My truck a, is a F-150. What color? White, platinum. Did you have a, a firearm in that truck? Uh, yes, I know it did. Okay, was there a question of, of someone... Of us taking that firearm, or, or not that I know of. Okay. Okay. Um, but as far as I know, I mean, my truck was sitting up at the house. Yeah, I thought someone had a. I think it was Randy. Okay. Okay. One of yeah, the Yes. So yes, my he yes he had a truck that that ultimately got inside later as the perimeter got yeah. expanded. His truck became inside and and they wouldn't let him move it. And I think they maybe took a firearm out of it. Okay. Him. Okay. Yeah. So, have so you know you're not sure. So so you were in Savannah uh, till about five forty-five. Arranged with Paul, so you communicated with Paul back and forth about switching the cars. Yep, he went to my house. He went to your house, which is normal. I yep. mean, he spent Sunday night with us. Okay, okay, as well. And then, um, did he tell you anything about anything going on with his dogs? Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, does, does Paul, do you know of any friends that Paul has, any close friends that he hangs out with or someone like, does he have a best friend? You know, he's got, uh, I would say that, that Nolan Tootin, um, Nolan Tootin's probably both of the boys. I mean, there's mutual friends, but mm -hmm. Rogan Gibson, um, those are the boys that, that over the years of what they've always been there. Okay. Um, I would say they're probably the closest. Uh, does Paul have a girlfriend? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. I believe he's, I think he's just been dating. Okay. Is he, is he dating anybody? I don't think he's dating anybody. Okay. Does he have a single ex girlfriend or anything like that that would have I mean, anybody recently? And, and we're, I'm just trying to, like, kind of like a victimology, trying to, you know, we ask everybody, you know, hey, who are they friends with? And, yeah. and, 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 Several people say the name, same names. Like, okay, we'll talk to that person. Yeah. But, so his only his his prior girlfriend was was Morgan, was one of the girls um, mm -hmm. in that boating accident. Yeah. And is he has he dated anybody since? I think he's dated uh, you know a fair amount. I mean, sure. I don't. It, but he's not become in a relationship, to my knowledge, with anybody. Okay. You know, more than a few dates, possibly. Okay. And you wouldn't have, you wouldn't know who those people were. No. Okay. There's nobody serious that I that I knew of, and he probably would have told me. Sure, and that's, if it was anybody of significance. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, bring you, know, you said he spends a lot of time at your house. You know, you know, brings a girl over. A girl shows yeah, up at no, the shop. You know, whatever. No, no. Um, all right. Um, so when and how can you think of any things? And I'm going to have to ask you some questions about Alec as well. Sure. Can Can you think of anything of of concern? That the family, that, I mean, any any issues that Alec might be going through, any any changes in his behavior recently, last couple months. You know, again, 
he's been dealing with the same issues mm -hmm. with the and for the, for the purpose of this interview what issues uh, uh, are you talking about the the gossip that's been going around uh, about the about the boating accident okay um other than that uh, you know he's he's rock solid okay um and now let me ask you this i don't know him um but anytime you have someone who's obviously something happened on, on this property um you know and it's has has he, i asked alex behavior the last couple months you said he, he seemed rock solid um and he has he ever voiced any concerns about about being in fear for his safety or anything like that nothing that it that i would remember and it okay. must not have been significant if he didn't no he would have said something he they, Okay. He, he's you know he's just not that type. He's you know he's a strong, strong. Okay. He's a strong one. Well, um, and and um, let me any any issues with alcohol, uh, you know, medication, anything like that. That, that not that I'm aware of. Okay. okay. Um, are you? Aware? I mean, we all drink, but well, sure. But you're all adults. I mean, right. it's like it's it's one thing to, uh, um, but to any any drinking to excess. No. Okay. Okay. Um, is he a liquor drinker? Is it like a? Uh, is it a, a? Is it a beer? Is it? I mean, you know, he drank like. If he were on a boat, he probably would drink beer. Mm -hmm. If he were, you know, in the evening, he he would have a drink possibly. Okay. okay. Um, would you ever? Would you ever think that he would drink in excess? No. I mean. Okay. No more than I would. Uh, Sure. And again, I know it's tough, the, you know, but we just want to get a better understanding. No, that's, no, no he does not have a drinking problem okay. at all. I okay. mean, that's without a doubt. All right. Uh, and no known medications or anything like that that he's been taking or? No. Okay. Okay. Um, and he hasn't said anything to you about him being concerned about any type of safety issues, no, no threats, nothing like that that have come in and nothing? You know, no, and and again, I I'm, I'm, I want to be delicate in how I answer because none of it is is anything that stands out in my mind. We we always will on off the street we'll have somebody saying, well, somebody posted such and such on social media, and you know we we over the, over the time we've just kind of we shrug it off. So it, nothing stands out as significant okay. to me. Okay. Um, we have not sat down and said, listen, we feel like there's a credible threat. We need to, you know, we okay. need to report it. Or, um, Do you know of any cameras that he would have had installed uh, um, on the property? Up well, there? I don't. And we had this conversation since Monday night, and it's my understanding he does not. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any, uh, did he ever, and obviously it's one thing for me to ask you what Alex has been saying. Because Alex is currently giving, you know, participating in an interview himself. But has he made any comments about any any employees, anybody that 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 he would have had concerns over? You talking about his employees? Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, are you aware of any of any of his employees that you have suspicions of? Well, I don't want to use. I wouldn't say suspicion, but the only the, the name and this is all coming up since Monday night sure. is the guy that's working for him out there now. And I've, I've never met him. Okay. Um, in fact, I don't know his name. I've heard it. And if you said it, I, I would probably recognize it, but okay. You know, what, what that was, would be the only person. And what would and, you, what would your concerns be about that person? Just, I mean, what has that person done anything recently that would, well, he, yes and no. So uh, I guess it's easier just to kind of tell you what I know about him. And all this is coming since. This is not prior to. Okay. You know, this is, we opened up these conversations after the accident or after the incident. Um, so I understand he was, you know, the people that have been talking said he's a little different, a little strange. He's, mm -hmm. it, they said that he's made some off the wall comments. Okay. I never heard it, never met him. All right. Um, I do know from Paul. And again, this didn't register to me until after all this, that this guy, they plant dove fields and you plant sunflowers mm -hmm. in a dove field. And I was told, Paul said that, that he believed that this guy had sprayed the dove fields with a chemical mm -hmm. that killed the dove, that killed the sunflowers. Yeah. Which, which would then keep the doves. Oh, that's right. So you, you, you lose the crop and you got to start over again. Mm -hmm. So, 
the engineer. And Paul told you that. And Paul told me that. Okay. Okay. And this is the same the same guy that. Uh, um, so um, now again, I don't know his name, but he is an employee, not of not of Ellick at his office or law firm, but out at Moselle. Okay, uh, CB Row. That CB is it. Okay, okay, CB Row. All right. So as it starts raining, we may have to raise our voices a little bit. Uh, sorry about that. That's all right. Of course, it's going to rain while we're in our car. Um, but do you have any suspicions that what uh, as to what might have happened? No. Well, Again, I you know I don't know that I used the word suspicion. I mean, my my, 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 the words on my end. Well, and uh, you know from all the conversations that that we have had, I'm talking about family, my, my brother's law partners. You know, we're all our minds are racing. Is you know what can we pick on? What can we do to 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 help y'all identify? And you know, this guy, and and I don't I don't ever want to call somebody on something I don't know, but but his name. It, you know, just kept coming back. Um, you know, other than that, I can't. I, I don't know of a single name that was identified. There were, there were people saying, "Well, people that are retaliating from the boating accident, mm-hmm. it could be." But there, there was not a name that they brought up. Just general situation. General, right. general situation. Um, so you can't think of it. You say a possible uh, CB Road, just just in the fact that he. Was he going to be fired for for ruining the the sunflower seeds? Well, again, I don't know. Okay, uh, you know, I've learned all this since Monday. Since you know, done. secondhand talk that, you know that you know he really was not doing all that great of a job and so on and so forth. But but again, I didn't even know he worked for him until okay. Monday. So the conversation um, started after that. You know. We're, we're looking, we have to look at every angle and we're looking at employees, acquaintances, um, did, with, with Alec, you know, we've asked a little bit about Paul's friends. Do you suspect any, that, I mean, I, and I keep using the word suspect, so I apologize. I'm a, I'm a cop. Sorry. That's okay. Um, could, could you think of any of Paul's friends that may have an ax to grind that outside the, the boat and the other, you know, no, you know, no, no, okay. nobody directly. No. Can you think of anything, any concern you might have of anything that that Maggie, may, any relationship Maggie may have been in that would have um, anybody that that's in her circle? Not that I'm aware of. Again, the, it, I'm trying to 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 separate the two. So I've I've learned a lot through these conversations since Monday. But okay. Prior to any of that, nothing. Okay. And is there anything that, that you've learned since Monday that would be of assistance to the investigation? It, as far as from Maggie's standpoint, or anything, but no. Yeah. Uh, C, C, D, C, B, yeah. that's the okay. That's the, the only name, direct name, okay. that that, so, I would, uh, that I would tie to and questions. When we, when we do these, you know, type of interviews where we're, we're having to like, it's almost like we have to pull information only because you may not be thinking of something right. until we ask it. And you're like, well, there may be this one. That's right. So that's why we're just kind of casting a net, trying to, you know, um, cool. can you think of any any friends or, or anybody in, in Alex's circle that that he that may have uh, anything that may have gone south or, um, you know, anybody that may have wanted to, 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 to hurt him or the family? No, no, it's just... No, not at all. Okay. Nobody in the circle. I mean, again, you hear the rumors. Sure. And that's that's the one thing that, you know, that... Well, I mean, we, you know, the thing is, that I understand that, you know, that the, the rumors, and those are those are tough to kind of to, to cut. Well, that's right. You don't know where they where they are. So, you know, this is a, a general interview from, you know, where we're trying to get as much information as possible. And I think that as y'all, you know, family and friends that are here talking to us now, you know, we're just trying to obtain as much information as possible so we can try to get a better idea or a better understanding of, of, of what, what right. really happened. Um, so when you got there, let's go back to the night of the seventh. So you get a call um, uh, to the best of your recollection, what does Alec tell you when, when he when he calls? He tells me that, that they've. I think he used the 
they're, I think he said they've been shot and and it was a kind of a mix between a cry and desperation okay um, and it says get here quick as you can and it was a very short I mean it, it I wasn't on the phone take 10 seconds maybe I, I don't okay. it was it was very short okay. and, and of course I'm, I'm immediately running trying to get dressed and now I do believe in, and at that point, my, you know, things are going mm -hmm. all through my head. I think he called me back a few minutes later, um, you know, in the same tone, same manner. And uh, I think he said that, that I, he didn't say ambulance or first, he didn't say, but he says, John, they're, they've covered them up. I think they're dead or... I, I remember him saying they covered him up or covered him up. Okay. Indicating they're dead. Um, so when you get there, at what point do you see Alan? Oh, man. Um, so so Chief drives me up to where we see the, the congregation of, of, you know, law enforcement. Um of course, I jump out, and I wasn't even waiting on him. I jump out, and, and I'm just running up there. Mm -hmm. And I get there, and, and somebody from Collin County, I don't recall who it was, um, stopped me and said, hey, you can't you can't go up. I said, I'm going. It's my brother. Um, he said, you, you can't go through here. And they directed me and told me how I could get around to where Alec was. And so Chief loaded me up, and, and we drove into another entrance and, and went around the scene. Um and of course, I, I saw Alec and just jumped out and just ran to him. Yeah, you know, we just we hugged and I mean it was it was very obvious what they weren't alive. So. Um, who what, do you remember what uh, Alec was wearing that night? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. I do. He was wearing a T-shirt. Okay. It was a T-shirt from. I was amazed that he still had them, and I was amazed that it fit him. I actually I don't know that it fit him because I think I saw his belly, mm -hmm. but it was a T-shirt that said Black Sheep on it. It was the name of my sport fish boat that I had. Okay, okay. And I remember seeing it and thinking I hadn't seen those shirts in a long time. So it's an old shirt. Yes, yeah, an old T-shirt. When did y'all make these T-shirts? Uh, I mean, man, it would have been two thousand nine, ten, okay. eleven, somewhere in there. So Ten years ago or so. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, what color was the t-shirt? It's a white t-shirt. Okay. okay. Um, and um, so you had that on, and then then I think he had shorts on. Okay. Okay. Um, and where did y'all go? I mean, so you, you we, with without then there were, yeah, and there were several several law enforcement guys right there with him, and there were some of the law partners were there, um, and we just we for whatever reason we just. You know, we just stood there in shock and mm -hmm. just really just, and I think at that point, nothing was happening. They were waiting, uh, Collin County was waiting on SLED to, to come process the scene. Okay. Um, and it, at some point, I, mean, I don't know, it was an hour or two, three hours later, we, you know, they were doing their job and we all left and went back to the house. Okay. Um, so, you know, like I said, we have to conduct a thorough investigation and, and you know, it's not, it's not a shock that any time a, a spouse is found deceased, we have to work just as hard to investigate the surviving spouse, whether it be to clear them or to find information that, you know, to find out if they were involved. Right. So I know that like whatever's in the media, that's not some secret plan that SLED has about, hey, Alec Murdoch is a person of interest. Right. At this point in an investigation, there are several persons of interest and we have to kind of start parsing through the, the folks involved with, with the boat, uh, you know, the, the, the folks involved with the lawsuit, stuff like that. So. Right. I don't want to seem like I'm specifically asking questions just about Alec, but the problem is, is that you're not going to know specific information about other parties 
for it the is. purpose of this interview, the information that you have is about out. So that's why I don't want you to leave here thinking. Ask anything. It's uh, the conversations I've had to have in the past day with my dad and everything else. It, it's it a, can't be any harder. Because look, I mean, I know that like I see your emotion uh, and talking and thinking and speaking about Maggie. Uh, she was practically best friends with your wife. Um, I've seen your emotion and how you talk about Paul and the fact that he worked for you and spent time with you and at your house. I know how, how, how much love you had for them. So we're not doing this for anything other than to find out because we owe it to them. So when, when you, you came to the house, Alec was there. Did you see anything in the house that may have, you know, that maybe we're missing? Did you see anything in the house that seemed out of sort? Come on, when we went back to yes. his house? Yes. Um, no. No, I mean, it, it. you know, I hadn't been there in a few months, so it, it all looked the same. I mean, they had been remodeling. Sure. So we really had, you know, they haven't been doing much out there while that remodel was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been remodeling Moselle or remodeling re- remodeling Moselle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. And I'm not even sure when they finished it. Okay. Um, so, but you were, but, but everything looked like it normally does to me. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and nothing, uh, again, I know I'm asking you a question about your brother, but like, did, did anything seem out of sorts with Alec and, and how he was? Well, I mean, everything was out of sorts. I mean, yeah. you know, he just lost his son and, and his wife. I mean, I mean, he was. I, I can't imagine what he was, what his was going through his mind. I can't comprehend what was going through mine, much less his. Yeah. Um, you know, he's. He, uh, it, it appeared that, you know, he would have moments of, of strength where he would straighten himself up, and then he just would break down. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, like I said, we're we're asking these questions about every person that we talk to. It just so happens that you had interaction with yeah. Alec versus any other potential person that we were, that were, you know, if you had been hanging out with CB, I'd be asking you questions about CB. Right. So, um, so you said that, uh, you drove Paul's truck. So you were in Paul's truck that day. Well, I, I believe it's Alec's truck. Uh, but, but yes, that's right. Correct. So it's registered to Alec, but Paul drives it. And it's your, I mean, like, when you said earlier, you know, you had Paul's truck. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, so one thing that we'd, we'd like to obtain uh, from you is the fact that you were in the Moselle house after the incident. I was. You were at the crime scene. Yeah. Um, we know that obviously you weren't there because, you know, the embassy police chief I was going to pick you up and whatnot. But so we are, uh, we'd like to obtain a, a, a buckle swab from you for, so for comparison purposes. So when we we're trying to send this stuff to the lab and what happens when we send stuff to the lab is that an unknown DNA sample will, will come up. Right. And, and unless you're in the CODIS system already, we have to go back to square one, given the fact that we are processing Paul's truck. You were in Paul's truck. Processing the truck that I, well, when you say Paul's truck, you know, he's got a truck that is his permanent truck. If yes. You will. But, yes. Well, the thing is, is that, so there is a, there is a, a violent incident at the Moselle property. Yeah. There is a truck missing that's found down the road. Right. Abandoned. Now we can go back and start piecing that's everything right. together, but it's just one of those things that like, so if, We'd like to get a consent from you to get a buckle swab. So when we are running for fingerprints and everything else, your your DNA is gonna show you up. Get anything you need. Okay. I mean, I don't want to. No, I mean, man, man, look, anything. I promise you. Okay, because like I said, it's just and, an uncomfortable. And, I, and I'll even say you don't even have to tread lightly. I mean, I'm telling you, these whole conversations have been tough. So yeah, just any pride out of me, however you can get it. I'm, I'm well, willing. So. Well, I appreciate that. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna. Um, uh, I'm gonna. We have a form that, that's that's standard. I'm gonna read it and 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 uh, have this piece that you can fill out, um, and it just calls for a buckle swab that we'll get. We'll we'll secure here in a second. So um, uh, and I'll just read it for the sake of of, of the the interview. I 
uh, and you can say your name, do hereby freely, voluntarily, without threats, pressure, or coercion of any kind, consent to a search of my person by agents of the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division and individuals in their company. Uh, location and description of premises searched. Swabs of the left and right inner cheeks of the mouth for a DNA sample. The sample will be used for comparison purposes in an ongoing investigation. So, um, um, so let me go ahead. Actually, you can get a pen here. Boom. Where you just mean this, uh, right here? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, signature of person uh, uh, consenting. So, I need you to sign your name and then you can print it right next to it. Obviously, in relation to the print, I just put owner. I mean, it's your. It's your oh, you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. All right. Date of birth. Okay. And there's the other corresponding information. What's today's date? Today is the the tenth. Oh, I'm tenth. sorry. Yep. In the time is two forty two forty two. Okay. Well, you need me to write my name in here. Or? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not that this isn't going to be invasive. It's just me not wanting to uh, um, to touch the swab. I break the seal. Oh, actually, there's going to be two. So if you take take one out, yeah, and then you can just uh, rub it on the inside of your right, just on the cheek. Yes, right, for about 15 seconds. Good. Yep. Yes, sir. Put it in there. Now we can take. Yep. Opposite side. Yes, sir. So this was this was right then. Okay. Right. Okay. Why is this called a buckle swab? That's just the the, the term that they gave it. No, you they call it a cheek swab. It's a, it's a buckle smear swab. It's called many different things. Is that good? Yes. Yep. So we're going to put this in here. And the only reason different is that uh, I just happen to have one of these and this will get placed in here. Okay. So. So um, we're, we're almost done here, sir. I just want to kind of go back through. And um, so we, we've kind of gone through any, any, um, do you have any idea of what might could have happened? Well, I, I mean, no, I don't. Um, you know, I don't. I mean, it's, you know, I'm kind of like y'all. I mean, I, I hear bits and pieces of, of information and with that, you know, I sit here and say, wonder what could happen, but no, I don't, I don't, have I don't know the call. I, don't, I certainly don't know the cause of it. I mean, obviously we all know they were shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and had there any been any change in the family dynamic recently, anything that, you know, we're kind of grasping at any type of, you know, when, when, when family members are shot in a, in a way that they were shot, it tends to be, you know, the, this doesn't seem like a random, right? You know, no, it is. You know, we've had we've had a lot of health issues with my parents, but but if anything, well, we've always been such a close, strong family. But yes. if anything, it's, it's made us you know stronger and closer. All right. Um, were there any issues, marital issues, between Alec and Maggie? That Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Any any issues that had developed between Paul and, and Alec? Not that I'm aware of. 
than any issues that may have developed between Paul and Maggie. Again, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, and I know that we've, we've talked about this before. Any issues between any of the three, Alec, Maggie, and Paul, any issues that may have developed with anybody that we haven't talked about? Anybody? Uh, I mean, I know that... Not that I'm aware of. Okay. okay. Paul was pretty open with me about most things. And if Paul knew something, I probably would have known. Okay. No. Yeah. And, and he hadn't said anything to you recently about no. No. Um, do you know if Paul is uh, um, the only negative thing he said was about that C C D C B. Okay. Yeah. Did he say anything? It, it, you know, again, it makes your mind wonder after the fact. But um, but I think he I think he was agitated. I think they were they were agitated that did he messed up the. Had been messing up. Yeah, yeah. You know, and again, this has been kind of put in my head after the fact. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, so what I did, but Paul did tell me. You know, he he says, "Listen, he sprayed the duff in, and I damn it, I got to go plant it again." That kind of, you know, that kind of yeah. talk. But the thing is, is that like, but but no no harsh words like you know no brush ups or anything okay. like that. So he hadn't had any brush ups with CB or anything like that. No, well, not that I know. That you're right. Okay, okay. Um, and would Paul have been? Uh, over at Moselle, so like if 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 CB was going to get fired or spoken to, would Paul be the one to do it? Or no, I'm sure not. No. Okay, I, I, I can't answer that, but I, I I feel confident Ellick, you know, Ellick handles things. Yeah, because I mean, I, we're trying to think of like if I mean it, if Paul were out there and fired him, that kind of not that's not Ellick would be Ellick takes charge on all that. Okay, okay, um, and then let's ask about the guns. Um, and, and, you know, did, did you know Paul to, uh, to, to, to travel with guns? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I know. It's, uh, what type of gun would you, you know, would you, uh, I know it's kind of a vague question to ask, but is there anything? Would he normally have in his truck? I, yeah. I would assume a shotgun, mm -hmm. um, shotgun. If he's like me, I, I either keep a shotgun or a twenty two. I mean, we're always, we have farms. We're always shooting pigs yep. and yep. whatnot. Um, would have you ever been down to those dog kennels before? Oh yeah. Okay. Was, was he known? Would he would he walk from the house down to the kennels? Would that would that be normal for him to be down there? Well, for him to be at the dog kennel? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he. I think I think that's probably. You know, and again, I'm only speculating. Sure. But but Paul was a he was an outdoors person. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if he were at Moselle and lets it pour down rain or it's time to eat or time to go to bed, he's not. He's not sitting inside. Okay. He's he's um, out working, playing in the fields, checking on things, just enjoying enjoying the property. So uh, he'd be down there. And, uh, was he holding? Do you have any knowledge of anybody else's dogs that he might have had in the kennels? Well, I do. I, I do now. Um, I know he was holding Rogan Gibson's dog, and he was holding, I, I believe, uh, my dad's dog. Okay. Okay. Um, Since then, my dad's health turned. And then would it be normal for Maggie to be down there? As well, well, I've since then, you know, in the conversation we've had, I found out yes, it is, it is normal for her to get on there. Okay, how would they normally get down there? Would you know? Based on what I've heard since Monday, is Paul would always drive something, and and it didn't matter. And it sounds like that if it had keys in it, gas in it, he would drive it. Okay, okay. You know, it, it, there was no one one favorite. But you don't know how he would have driven down there. You talking about then? Yeah, that night. No, night. no. Okay, and how would Maggie get down there. Well, and I've been told since Monday as well that she, in many ways, a lot of times she would walk. A lot of times she would, you know, take her car. Or, okay. I so, think it usually it probably would be her car or walk. And, and or the say, golf cart. You say, you've answered these, you know, I've learned since then. They've said, they've told me. Who's they? This is, you know, we've got a close knit with the family and and with with Alex Law Partners that are very close with, with all of them. Okay. And, you know, we've... We've been huddling together, trying to to make sense of it. Make all. sense of it all. That's yeah. exactly right. So, okay. so Maggie uh, would sometimes walk down there. That's that's what I've been told. Okay, okay. And then um, Paul would he would walk. He would that, according to what what Alec tells me, Paul would always drive something. Okay. And 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 you had Paul's tr well, you had one of the trucks. Yeah. Paul's what what did what was Paul's other truck? You said his his it is a. Wide F one fifty. Okay, and do you know where that's located at? 
um, I do now. It's at a at an auto shop here in town for repairs. Okay, so that so his go to truck is is his everyday truck is in the shop. That's correct. Um, and was that why he was driving the F two fifty? Not presumably so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and um, and there's no so he had come and gotten your truck, gone back to his house. And and your truck was where my truck was parked at the house at, at Mosaic. the house. Okay, so um, and how far do you think it is from the house to the kennels? You know, I would I would guess it's probably a quarter of a mile. Okay, okay, several hundred yards. Several I mean, hundred yards. You know, yeah. Okay, but he didn't drive your truck down there. Well, I don't know. I mean, it was at the house when yeah. I got there. Okay, so, so you don't know if it was down there and then driven back. Not. Yeah, I would assume that he would have driven my truck parked it since it's mine and then yeah. gotten in one of their cars mm -hmm. trucks i mean okay okay um and but you uh, when you got there your truck that he borrowed was parked up was parked house. right in front of the house okay. where you normally would park okay um and do you know if they kept any guns back at the kennels i don't know okay I've never, you know, I've never, they don't have a gun rack that's obvious when you pull up or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. You know. But like you said, I mean. Laying around, it, I would say it's very possible. Yeah. Um, and would Maggie ever, do you know, Maggie, would she carry a gun when she? I, I don't think Maggie was a hunter or shooter. I think she's. Okay, okay. She but was a lady's you, lady. But if, if, if Paul was coming from the house down to the kennels, you'd expect him to have a gun? I mean, he wouldn't carry a gun just because he was going there. But if he were in, in his truck and he's riding the property, I, I would assume that he's not going to ride that property without a gun, mm -hmm. you know, and just, okay. and not for safety reasons for, you know, again, it's loaded with hogs and for practical purposes. You know, it's, well, it's just kind of, it's kind of what you do. I mean, no, I understand. I understand. You, know, you, you have, a, you have 1700 acres. Yeah. I mean, that's, you're going to drive right. around and you're going to have, you know, because if you have to get out for something, that's right. Um, whether you shoot snakes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, it would it would amaze me, or it would have. I would be surprised if he were in a vehicle, riding the property and didn't have a gun. Okay, okay. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Just, All right. And you, do you have any knowledge of Paul firing any weapons that night? Well, I, well, yeah, I learned that today. I heard that that he and Alec both had. Uh, I think they said they shot a pistol. Okay. Okay. You know, so so you're mentioning. I'm assuming Alec is telling the other. Yeah, I assume so. Okay, so he fired. He, what? What I what I heard in in here was, they were. I think Paul and Alec were, and again, secondhand information. Mm -hmm. But Paul and Alec were were riding the property, and at some point, whether they pulled up to a pond, uh, I think he started telling, and he kind of got broken up, but. I think he was saying that Paul was bragging that he was a better shot than Alec, and so they set up a target and, you know, tried their skills and, and shot a couple of times. Okay. Um, are there any other spots on that property that, that I mean, you've got the main house, you've got the garage, you've got the kennels. Are there any other, like, outbuildings on that Yeah, there's property? a cabin right up by the kennels. Okay, and who lives in that cabin? I don't think anybody lives in it, no. Is that the green one? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, is, that, is there a housekeeper that stays out there? I don't know. Okay. I, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, did so. You since learned since the incident that Paul and Alan drove around the property and may have fired a, fired a pistol uh, a couple times. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see if there's anything else. Have you got any questions? Any questions for us? Well. Uh, not so much questions, but one of your agents, um, the, the female that, that I walked the house with at Moselle, what's her name? Um, Red hair? Yes. Agent McAllister. McAllister. Yep. She, Katie McAllister. Yep. So, um, and I asked her then, I said, listen, I said, you know, when something like this, when, it, when this happened, it, you know, I've kind of gotten a little bit of tidbits of information. I had a guy call me and I, I wanted to tell her about it and she and I thought she was gonna call me back and mm -hmm. anyway I had a guy call me his name is Lawrence Murdoch for not related okay and he felt he said he read somewhere whether if there was anything suspicious to the, to the general public please let us know or let somebody know absolutely okay he called me and said that he saw a black 
SUV off of, uh, he lived, and I don't know what road it is, but he described it as when you're leaving Hampton, you turn left at Crockettville, I believe he said. And there was some reference over over the past several half a year or so about a, a hit and run that supposedly they, they tried to say that, that Paul had something to do with. Okay. Or, or Buster had something to do with. Mm-hmm. Lawrence Murdoch said he saw a car, a, a black uh, SUV sitting there at the site where I, I assume there's some type of a marker there. Mm-hmm. And he said, John, I, I don't know whether it means anything or not, but it was it, it stood out to me and I, and I wanted to let you know. Okay. And, um, and so that's... It, you may could get more information from him about sure. it, but that's what he told me. Do you have a contact number for him? Um, I can get that for you. Okay. Can I do that while we still? I, I think so. Yes, sir. Just just minimize. I think it's yep. And just go to your go to the green phone. phone. Okay. Yep. And look for. All right. So his name is Lawrence Murdoch. Okay. Number. You're in your contacts. Oh, yeah. Do you happen to have the contact for that employee of yours, Chance? Oh, yes, I do. Uh, okay, so. Chance Peters. He stayed with us Sunday night. How often did he stay with you? Well, he just started working the the, the Monday previous um, or the sun, or Tuesday previous. Take uh, was closer to the shop. Yes, I, if I remember him telling me, I think he may have come from Charleston instead of driving to Moselle back to back to the Bluffton store or Oakley store. He stayed with us that night. Where was he staying prior to that? You know. Well, I mean, he lived in Moselle. Where did he stay? He said he came back from school. Uh, where did he stay? Uh, well, for the sake of the interview, where did he go to school at? He goes to Carolina, okay. South Carolina. Okay. And where does he live at when he's attending South Carolina? I don't know. Okay. okay. In Columbia somewhere. Okay. Does he stay in a dorm or an apartment? I'm assuming an apartment. Okay. But you don't have any knowledge of that? No, I've never been there. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, with COVID, I don't think anybody went. I don't even know that they were in school in person. I'm not sure how it was. But he was. But he was living. He, in Columbia. He, yeah, I think he was living in Columbia. Okay. Would he come home often, or? Yeah. You know, when he wasn't working for me, and and it wasn't some special event or season, I wasn't. You know, I would talk to him occasionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he. I think I would say he probably came home a fair amount. I think he en- enjoyed being down here. Okay. Uh, and where did he stay at Moselle? And to my knowledge, he would. Okay. You don't have any knowledge of him staying anywhere else? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he's, I would assume he's just like any other young young adult that this dating. He probably goes wherever the crowd is, and mm-hmm. that's what I gather he being in Charleston for. All right. But you don't have any direct knowledge of that, anything specific? No. All right. Do you have any other questions for us? No. Um, I expressed it to... Yeah. To David, when we were inside, um, you know, we would like to know more about even if and I understand you can't you can't release details to jeopardize the investigation. But but we would. And I'm assuming that that Alec or, or whoever is saying the same thing, we would like for somebody to to kind of at least, you know, communicate that of, sure. of, of if there's something that can be told or any little pieces to help. Well, sometimes, and, and I can give you a little bit of that. So when, when we, you know, this happens late Monday night, by Tuesday, Wednesday, and here it is Thursday. So we're not quite three days out. You know, it takes our crime scene to come down to start to start pulling the information. Right. You know, uh, the, the, any analysis that we're able to get done. So there are things that, that there may be something that we can collect in the very first night that may be key to solving this right and it might it might take us three to four days to get that particular test run to get the, the the results back so anything that that 
you know, and we won't release anything to the to the media. So, you know, we, we don't do that. Right. So, and unfortunately, that's what we, you know, that's. And I think that people, people are, are bringing assuming, that to us. And, and people are assuming when, when there's when there's an absence of information, the media will either create the narrative and to fill that, that void or they'll reach out to somebody who, who you know, presents themselves as having inside information or knowledge of the case. And then they'll run with that. And that's how a lot of this, you know, like, like, you know, with the, the media coming out and saying, oh, well, well, you know, there's this many guns used. There's that, you know, there are certain things that are getting out that are outside of our control. Right. Um, and, and really the only person that we'll speak to would be, I mean, Alec is, is the, is the victim because he's the, the surviving spouse. So, so we'll provide that information to him, but sometimes it's tough because, we don't have much to say so early on. No, that's and, right. And I understand that. I guess just the, the simple way of, of requesting is if there becomes some information that that can be shareable, that that, sure. that could help ease our ease our minds. And, you know, I, I guess I brought it up to one of my dad's law partners. Uh, I had my wife and, you know, of course, we don't live here. Mm-hmm. I had my wife and I have a. And we spent last night here and, and, you know, and I turned the lights off, I, I thought to myself and I never liked this. I said, you know, all we say, sure. And that's, that's just not, that's just not a good feeling. It's just, so, so anything, any information that can, that can help us without jeopardizing or, yeah. or messing up an investigation would be helpful, I guess. And, and that's, and that kind of goes both ways where I know that if, if something is going on that, that we're not seeing, because right. obviously this wasn't an accident, right? It wasn't like, you yeah. know, uh, it wasn't, doesn't appear to be a robbery gone bad because nothing was taken, nothing was missing. Um, if there is something afoot that we're not aware of, right? Uh, in like, just like you said earlier, hey, pride goes out the window. Right. You have to look at every, That's you have right. to pick at every little, pull every string. Um, if there's something that, that, that comes out that, that, you know, if you're sitting here with your wife and you're starting to second guess your safety, because if there's something going on where there, if there's somebody's done something right to, to warrant a, someone trying to, well, that's just it. I, yeah, there was nothing that warranted. It's just yep. in the back well, of your mind. As, as this starts coming out, we need to do what's best, not right. just for, you know, to protect Alec, but we need to do what's best, protect you, Right. Protect your dad, protect your mom, protect your wife. It, it, it kind of expands beyond that. So, sure. you know, if, if there's something that, that y'all hear of, it's just as important to tell us about right. it. Right. You know, um, I understand that, you know, um, you know, we, we want to do what we can to solve this, to, to give Alec peace of mind. Right. We understand that. And, and, and it's always best to, you know, we spent the last couple of days, matter of fact, this morning I was with some folks with the boat from the boat. Right. You know, because we have to check their whereabouts and, 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 and it's just as easy to, you know, we, we, we track folks down to either see if they have something to tell us or if right. we can clear them right away. And, you know, I know it's, it's, it's tough where, where we're not giving y'all information. No, you know, and I, I respect the part. I, I understand you can't give, but so much, but. You know, just what you just said is, you know, when you said, you know, we've we've already met with some of the folks from the boat. That's, you know, that's some of the questions that are in our minds. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, you know, you know, of course, we we know you're doing a good job and we know you're doing it right. But hearing you say that, you know, we've met we we've, we've made that contact. That's it's reassuring. Yes, and so I mean, just like like you said, there is the there's a situation with the hit and run. There's the situation with the boat. Uh, unfortunately, there are a couple instances. Where where Paul has, you know, kind of been involved in, in in circumstances, whether he's responsible or not, whatever, that's not for us to decide. But <laughs> there's a lot of strings for us to pull on, right? And sometimes that takes time, you yeah. know. And I know y'all go do your best, and you know, just as as much as y'all can do to help us heal, as I guess is what absolutely. you know, and move through this. And, and it, I mean, it, my heart breaks for, for Mr. Alex and, 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 and for the rest of the family. Uh, you know, I can't imagine the, 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 the pain and the grief that, that you collectively y'all are suffering. Um, and it is tough because we are, we, we're not going to leave any stone unturned. Right. And, and unfortunately, in these cases, in his moment of grief, 
here we have to come and say, well, we need to interview you. Right, that's right. And, and, and sometimes folks get frustrated because mm-hmm. they're like, well, why are you wasting time on me? No, and it's, right. and it's um, one of those situations where it's like, we, un- we understand it, you know, and, and, and luckily y'all having your family, having that prosecutorial experience, y'all know how we work. And it's like, it's just as important that we identify persons involved. It's just as important for us to identify persons. We can say, Hey, look, we've conducted those, right. you know, that part of the investigation and these folks are not, you know, involved. And cause that's no, that's nothing he should have to carry around. No, that's right. You know, the, the innuendo and the rumor, um, you know, we need to do our best to, to find out for Paul and for Maggie and then to, to give Alex some peace. So like I said, um, uh, if, I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you sitting here with me. Um, if you know, you got my card, if you can think of anything else that, you know, um, obviously there's, there's lots of, folks involved in this you know yeah. you can call me you can call agent McAllister, you can call agent owen um we're all on the same team here sure. so um if you can think of something else that that maybe i forgot well, to ask or- and i mentioned that to 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 katie when she we were at the house i just said you know who should we call if if something pops up or well i can tell you whoever you whichever so it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter because if you yeah you got my number you can call you can text we'll forward it to to everybody uh we're all hands on deck on this so uh this is this is my this is our office this is our team so um you know uh, we all information gets shared so uh, if you can think of anything else by all means is there anything i may have didn't ask you that that anything that uh, nothing that i can think of okay Uh, Well, like I said, I'm, I'm terribly sorry for the loss that y'all suffered, um, you know, and, and, and hopefully no, we get, I don't. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And hopefully we get some get some answers we can give y'all soon. Well, other than information, is there anything that we could be doing that, that helps y'all that y'all may not have access? I mean, I know y'all assume y'all have access to most anything, whether it's social media, whether it's well, that's whether that, it's reward, whatever. I mean, well, the stuff when it comes to social media and stuff like that, like the more um the more that we have access to, like, I know that, um, that like Paul's cell phone was, was recovered. Um, not having the password, stuff like that. If, right. if, 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 if people know, do y'all still not have the password as of this point? No. Okay. So if that's something that y'all could get for us, that'd be helpful because we have to send it, uh, to, uh, to be examined when they try to I mean, they, yeah. and they, and that's something I can work on. I can reach out to more, more of his friends. If I assume y'all probably already have. Yeah. And, but, and, and the thing is, I think there's some things that, um, we can ask that. And, and sometimes people are protective. They're like, Oh, I'm not going to give the police my friend's right. password. But if that's something that the family knows or, or something, um, same thing with Maggie, if anybody can, you know, anything that can assist us in, in, in the getting into these phones and not that the phones are going to have, well, y'all got into Maggie's. Uh, yeah, yes. But, but it's, it's again, when, but, in, but in the, yeah. so when you, when you get into a phone without the password, you know, when you get in with a password, you get 100% of the information. Right. When you get in without the password, there may be something you miss. Yes, so when, you know, we have to look at, I mean, these phones may not hold the key to what happened, but who's to say that it doesn't one show piece. one little small piece that helps break this. So uh, cellular devices are important. Um, any, you know, if you think of anybody that may have had contact with Maggie or Paul or anybody that day, um, who would have Paul work? Who would Paul have worked with that day? Yeah, I can find out. Like could you said, find? Yeah, could you find yeah. out who worked at, at the store with him? Well, uh, I mean, I know the employees were there, but I don't know what jobs he did just sure. because I wasn't there. Absolutely, that's something. If you could, that would be helpful. If you could find out, so maybe we can track down that. Just if, 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 say, if Paul had a uh, had a, a conversation with someone on the phone that that while he was working along someone, and, and maybe they overheard something. Okay. You know, uh, and, and at this point, every little bit will help. Um, you know, we can't, uh, I wish it was like it is on television. Where you can just, you know, take a picture and have it examined and boom, you get to yeah. solve it in a, in a nice 44 minute episode. Um, but if, if someone out is, if this person's hiding in plain sight, you know, right. they're driving around, they're walking around right now. Uh, and and probably paying close attention to this and, and, and anything we can do to help identify that person would be helpful. Okay. So, all right, sir. Well, it is uh, it is three ten p.m. and we are concluding the interview.